this video is about the uh, graphics in guide eye um, if you've got guide eye and you're not using it that's fine but there are areas that I think are oh, you will find really useful even though you might not want to use it for programming and the graphics is one of them the graphics on guide eye is uh, is quite good um, so um, let's get straight into it and look at what we need to do now to make the graphics work um, you've got to uh, go onto the guide eye side um, and you've got to put all your tools in correctly in other words if you look at a tool for example this uh, this tool 3 um, it's a uh, it's a 20 mil drill so it's got to go in at uh, 10 mil radius so you've got to put that in even though you normally wouldn't need to bother so you've got to put the radius of that drill and that's purely so it can appear on the graphics then you define it as a drill you can write a little comment in there um, then you put a number one in there to say that it's vertical and most machines will be this way um, and then you put the angle of the drill in there so that detail must be in there I'm also using tool number four here which is a 32 mil end mill and I've got that in as a 16 mil radius um, I've got the wear and then I've got it says there 20 mil end mill it's actually 32 need to alter that um, and uh, then I've got the, uh, the the one the same for the actual uh, length uh, the sorry the type the one for the type of tool and um, as I say that should be uh, 32 I'll just make it millimeters for now input another M millimeters input so that's my uh, my end mill um, and I'm going to close that and um, the the what I need to do then is add this graphics so that it's got the actual graphic shape in there and that just goes at the beginning of that program and it's totally ignored when you're running this program normally wherever you're running it however you're running it uh, it'll just be ignored unless you actually come to run the graphics and the way we add that is we look for this uh, uh, start button there it says start and then you can cursor across and you can see your different blank forms for this one I'm going to use a rectangle so I'm going to select that and my rectangle it's already put in but it would have been better if I'd have deleted this really but still it's 200 wide it's 200 deep and then it's got a height of 20 mil and then my datum was saying 100 100 that means that the datum will be in the middle so it's 100 from that uh, bottom left hand corner and 100 in Y so that puts it in the middle and then this should be a zero um, so I'm having nothing on the top of this because I'm not machining the top I'm just going to drill some holes and stuff like that so insert that and that goes in there and if you need to alter that you can either you can either go individually into these different bits and it does tell you what they do so it does tell you down the bottom there that that's the width and so on so you can alter it here or if you want that graphic back up just go across till it's all yellow press your input and you'll see the graphic again and you can just uh, go through it so either way that you want to do it but as I say you can stuff that at the beginning of that program and even if you don't use it it's it's all there so let me just have a swig of my tea Oh, excuse me so as I was saying that graphics in there and that will now work so let's have a look at the actual graphics now and the first time you run this it might be a little bit slow because it has to sort of read everything through so I'm going to click simulate and um, that's not that's just whatever was there from before so it's not necessarily my my part hit rewind first just to make sure you're back at the beginning and then I can click start and it runs my graphics and that's uh, quickly whizzed through so I can uh, rewind that uh, that takes it back to the beginning and then I can just single step it through again read it again it will reset that graphic as I'm going through so I can step it through be patient with this because I say it might take a while to step through and then you can see each individual step 
as it's cut in and this is not going to give you really accurate information or anything it's just going to give you a rough guide that your program is something like correct so I'm stepping through there so looking at the different controls we've got um, you'll see large and small as it says bigger and smaller it doesn't do it to the actual completed thing you've got to run it all through again so you can go as big as you want there or you can just use the auto which fits it to the screen reverse will mean that you're looking underneath the part I'll just quickly show you that so you can see what I mean um, you're actually looking um, from underneath get to this screen start so I'm actually under the part so you can see what's going on underneath it <clears throat> and then you've got um, you've got this reverse which means you're looking underneath um, you can move it from left to right these arrows are incredibly confusing because who would think it would move that way when the arrow is pointing that way but still I don't know the logic behind that but it moves anyway and it moves up and down and then you can sort of recenter it with that one okay so that's that one then if we come to um, the rotate doesn't actually rotate it gives you choices of rotation so you could do an XY view if I OK that it's effectively looking down um, on the thing and then you've got um, the YZ view so you can look in any in any plane that you want to look in and then uh, they're the different planes X, Y, Z, X and so on then you've got ISO, X, Y now if you look at these axes that's how you'll see it your X will be pointing that way, Y and your Z's up if I OK that you'll see that that looks like that <clears throat> and then you've got these others you've got um, X, Y, Y, Z so you can look at it in any, in any direction that you want and once you've selected that you just click your OK to show you the view and then you run your graphics again and you're just just looking at it from a different point of view so you can uh, you can sort of hone in on a bit of detail if you want but it is a bit little bit tricky because um, you the minute you start to do this you can't actually see what you're looking at so what you've really got to do there is do that then move it if you see what I mean run your graphics again so you can see there you go so I can see that hole so that's basically what you can do with the graphics um, when you're running it you can stop it halfway you can pause it um, and you can block it through single and rewind um, you've also got this other one which says toolpath what that means is you just you all you see is the toolpath. Um, if I just bring that back to how it was there, auto, you'll see that what that is is it just shows you the toolpath, so you don't get any of the fancy sort of yellow bits. Um, I don't particularly like that, but I'm sure there's a use for it. And you can uh, you can say either oh, display the tool or not, uh, sorry the path or not. Um, and then you can clear clear that and start again uh, if you go back to Annie and Annie me which I don't know what that means anime whatever that brings you back to this this graphic so if you want to edit your um, this you've got to first of all turn this graphic off so you go graphics off and then you can start editing your part doing whatever it is you want to do so that's your graphics in guide eye it is a bit crude um, but uh, that's the best there is so um, it is good in a sense that you can test your program and um, and you can see roughly if it's right you can see it whizzing off to some weird place or whatever so I recommend you use it and always test it out because it's another little check before you actually start cutting metal and I can see quite a lot from it